Alrighty guys, here we go to the Mmm Wrestling Show. This is our Backlash 2018 instant take. So this is basically just going to be like a rundown. Uh, I just finished watching um, Backlash 2018 and, you know, the kickoff show, the main show, and the post show. I uh, actually have uh, the rerun of it playing in the background right now, right over here on my screen uh, behind me. So I'm already watching it again for a second time, but I'll be recording the the podcast and the YouTube uh, show right here at the same time. Well, I got that going on. And uh, so let's get, let's get into the instant take here. So uh, we had the kickoff show. Some notable things that happened in the kickoff show was Miz Taraj telling Miz that, that they're not going to be in his co corner anymore, that they're not his supporting cast. They're on separate shows. Uh, we had the Iconics come on. Uh, I liked what they were doing. Um, you know, making fun of Pete Rosenberg there. Uh, I'm a fan of uh, Pete Rosenberg's podcast, Cheap Heat, and I like the Iconics coming on there and, uh, you know, making some jokes at him. That was pretty good. Uh, we had Bailey and Sasha talking to each other. Bailey wanting Sasha to be in her corner and Sasha saying no. Um, and then to end the kickoff show here, we got the match of Bailey versus Ruby Riot. Uh, Riot, uh, Ruby Riot got the win here. Um, it was okay match, uh, you know, it's kickoff show match. Uh, they showed some so shots in the backstage of so Sasha still watching the match, uh, there for a little bit. And, uh, yeah, that was it. Ruby Riot got the win and yeah, that was good. Uh, so now let's get to the main show. We started out with the, um, Intercontinental title match, uh, Rollins, Seth Rollins versus The Miz. Uh, you know, this was a really good match. Um, Seth Rollins, no matter what match he's been in lately, he has been on fire. Uh, the Miz, uh, for, you know, for the past year, uh, he's really been on fire, so I'm loving everything he's doing as well. But the match, this is another one that had a lot of really great um, near falls, a lot of big moves in it, um, a lot of near misses on big moves uh, to keep that suspense going. Uh, the great, there was a great pace in this match. Um you know, and then, um, you know, Seth Rollins ended up getting the win here with the stomp. And I think The Miz did a great job of selling that stomp in this match. Uh, it looked really good, a uh, really good sell from The Miz as well. And it was a really good match overall. And in fact, I've talked about that great pace. You know, we started off with a great match here. And actually, on my notes, I put Backlash 2018. And then in parentheses, I put pacing because. We had uh, the first match here tonight should have been the main event based on everything else that happened in the rest of the show. So you're kind of you. There's a little bit of spoiler about how I felt about the rest of the show. But uh, here, let's move on. Uh, next up, uh, we had uh, the Raw Women's Title: um, Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax. Uh, this was another one that I had a problem with the pacing. Nia Jax got the win, so I'm happy about that. That's who I wanted to win, um, but. Alexa Bliss had way too much offense in this match. Like, she was in control of the most of the match, and that's just not what I want to see. I want to see Nia Jax be, you know, big and powerful for most of the match, not just, you know, land one Samoan drop and that's it. I mean, I'm great. I'm great. I'm glad that's all she needs to get the win, but I want to see her be dominant. I don't want to see her being dominated most of the match. Uh, she needs to be dominant. I'm. She should be, like... You know what Braun Strowman is for the men's side. Like that's what that's what Nia Jack should be for the women's side. She should just be this, as they call her, this irresistible force uh, to be reckoned with, and not you know be not be you know being beat down for so long. Um, but yeah, she did get the win, so she holds on to the Raw Women's Title. I did like her speech afterwards. You know, if you know, don't be ordinary, be extraordinary. Um, you know, she was saying this is for anyone being bullied, you know, in the past, now, in the future, if, you know, if you're being bullied at, you know, school, work, or online, so I felt that was a good message, and, you know, she said that she was proud, and, you know, she said, this is me, and, like, I think that's a great, um, a great line there, saying this is me, and being just proud of, you know, who you are. Um, let's see here, we got a little segment up next that was Smojo, um, said he was going to make... Uh, Roman Reigns lament all his failures that he's had in the past, and he's going to beat him tonight. Um, and then after that, we had uh, the U.S. title match, uh, Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy. And um, this was another one 
you know, pacing is just too slow. I mean, these are two classic guys, so you should have a great classic match, but people were chanting Rusev Day during it, um, and the pacing overall was just too slow uh, for me, especially after the hot start that we got with that Intercontinental title match. Uh, mm. You know, we had a lot of good classic moves and, you know, a classic finish from Jeff Hardy, so that was nice. Uh, the next thing that we had up here was actually another one of my most favorite parts of the night. Um, it was one of the things they got right here at Backlash, and, you know, they didn't actually, it was just an actual match, so they didn't have to worry about uh, the pacing. But, you know, the pacing of the jokes was actually really good in this next segment, and this segment was Elias. Um, you know, he comes out to the ring and he's going to do his thing. And this is another one where we've seen this in the past where he's interrupted during his uh, during his little performance. And each time before he's about to perform, he, you know, gets interrupted. But tonight it was really, it was extra good. It was extra special. He was, you know, extra funny um, every time he was about to do it, you know. So how it started out, he came out saying like, oh, he, you know, they're in New Jersey. He knows Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen actually calls him the boss. And, you know, uh, you know, and he said that the boss actually told him that he, you know, the only regret that he has is the fact that he's from New Jersey. Um, so that was good. Um, then we had New Day, New Day enter right before he's about to perform. And then they say that they went to a walk with Elias and, you know, they got like, crash symbols a, a marching drum and you know xavier's always got his uh trombone there and so they're playing and elisa's like no you guys don't have enough talent so go ahead and just let me play and then enter uh aiden english and he comes out and you know he's singing rusev day and he puts on a great song like he has been lately um and they you know they come down and um elias just tells him again like hey back up like i'm trying to do my thing here uh so he's about to perform again and well, it was real funny each time he's like jojo like you know give me my entrance turn down the lights and give me my entrance and she does it every time and each time he's just getting a little bit more frustrated and so then boom next comes out uh no way jose and uh, Brizane goes in the conga line with no way jose uh, titus worldwide's in that conga line um and this was really, you know, it was really good, really funny. Again, so Titus, I'm not Titus, Elias tries to do this again one last time. And then on this last time, uh, you know, right when he's about to do it, uh, Bobby Roode uh, is in the ring. Instead of hearing uh, Elias' performance, we get the glorious uh, part of his song. It just says, goes glorious. And then Bobby Roode hits a glorious DDT on him. And then everybody gets in the conga line and gets on out of there and uh yeah just overall this was great um the performance by everybody in this was uh really good it was a really funny segment um better than most of the matches of the night um entertainment wise uh so next after this we had uh daniel bryan versus big Cass. uh daniel bryan got the win here uh he ended up doing exactly what he said he was going to do uh you know he got uh daniel bryan in the yes lock and got him to tap out you know just proving that uh you know having a big heart is you know better than you know just being tall uh but big cast goes ahead and he you know is being the heel that he is and he attacks daniel bryan after the match is over um and you know fans are like uh booing him i think he's got good heat um they're not just like uh doing the regular like normal booing like oh man like this is this is boring we don't like this booing like you know fans actually had a chant going on of like you tapped out you tapped out they were doing that so i think i think this um is over obviously they're probably going to still go with this feud for a while since daniel bryan even though he got the win he got attacked afterwards so they'll probably do this a couple more times before they uh do daniel bryan and the miz uh will build up to that which will make it more special i think uh, but let's keep talking about tonight. Next up, we had the SmackDown Women's Championship, uh, which was Charlotte versus Carmella. And uh, Carmella ended up getting the win here. Uh, I felt like this was a pretty decent match. Um, uh, what happened here in the end, uh, Charlotte misses a moonsault off the top rope. Uh, acts like she hurts her knee. And uh, Carmella is able to hit that super kick and get that pin one, two, three. 
and uh, yeah, so she got the win, and and it was a clean win. You know, Charlotte can say that she got hurt when she missed the move, but you know, Carmella got the win clean. She didn't do any sort of cheating to get it, so you know, it was actually a good win for her. Um, and we'll get to more about uh, Carmella later. Like, I really liked her segment in the post show. Okay, so. Uh, next up after this, we had uh, the SmackDown title match, uh, no disqualification match of Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles. And this was one um, that, you know, there was there was points in this match where, like, it was good. And then there was points in this match where it was like, okay, this is a WWE match where, you know, we're going to get somebody in a hold for a really long time. And the pace is going to slow down for a while. I wish they would have just kept the pace up the whole time. But uh, in this match... Um, you know, uh, I, and I, something that I did like about this match was actually Corey Graves and he is mentioning, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura's past, uh, you know, ref, he didn't say New Japan, uh, specifically, but, you know, he made, uh, you know, kind of a reference to the fact that, um, when Shinsuke Nakamura was in Japan, uh, he, this is exactly what his character was. He was a heel when he was over there. Uh, so this is actually, he was like, you know, this is actually for anybody who has followed uh, Nakamura's career for a long time. Like, this is the classic Nakamura. Like, this is the guy that we know as the King of Strong style. Um, so I'm glad that they actually are acknowledging, you know, that WWE, current WWE wrestlers had careers before they came to the WWE. Because, you know, in the past, they've always kind of just ignored that anybody had a wrestling career before them. And you didn't really make any reference to it or acted like, you know, they didn't wrestle until they got to WWE. Um, but yeah, um, and the fans were dead in this match for a little while. I think, you know, this is getting towards the end of the show and there was a lot of really slow paced things going on. Uh, so I think the fans at certain points during this match were a little bit dead, uh, which was unfortunate for them because, you know, they, these guys always do put on good matches, but, you know, all the slow paced matches earlier the in the night just made it more exaggerated anytime they had um, a moment in their match that, um, you know, went on a little long with holds or, you know, them laying down on the ground, uh, not doing anything. Um, let's see here, but um, highlights of this match was uh, Nakamura hits um, AJ Styles with a low blow and then he turns around and then hits Nakamura with a low blow and then a little bit later on uh, they both kick each other at the same time with a low blow and then the ref decides to stop the match uh, that they can't get up in time for the 10 count and the match is called and AJ gets to retain the championship I'm not going to say he wins I'm just going to say you know it was a double count out and so AJ Styles retains um, uh, not super excited about that I wish they would have done you know, like, I don't know what they're waiting for, but I feel like Nakamura is such a great heel that they need to go ahead and just put the belt on him already. Like, he's, you know, I'm ready for Nak I'm ready for heel Nakamura to have the belt. I think he's going to be really good with a belt on him. Or if they don't want to do it, then, you know, I don't know. But I, just, I, I don't know. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe they are building still building up to the great match that we know that Nakamura and AJ can have. Uh, by giving us a little bit matches that aren't quite up to par of what they of what we think we should get uh, so maybe later this summer some at some point we're gonna get the match that we <laughs> really we really want to see and I don't know what kind of match it's gonna be because now we've already had a match of them where they both went in as baby faces who respect each other then Nakamura turned heel and then we had a match where Nakamura goes in his heel and AJ is the baby face. And then, you know, Shinsuke got under AJ's uh, skin. So AJ, uh, you know, goes ahead and um, gets, you know, a count out uh, because he's so mad that he doesn't care. And then we get the match after that, which was this one. Uh, and so you would have thought this would have been the didn't necessarily have to be the blow off match but the blow off to this part of the storyline and that we would move on uh, but that's not the case and so each time now now we we already ramped up to a no disqualification match uh and it was no decision so 
I don't know what's going to be next. Like, how else are they going to ramp it up? Like, they're going to have to do, like, uh, you know, like a cage match next or something. Like, they have to do something else now to up the ante um, to get me more excited about the next one. Uh, so we'll see what they what they do in the future. Um, next up, we had uh, Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley got the win here. This is kind of interesting. So, um, you know, uh, Sami Zayn decides, like, you know, he figures out, obviously, we have no way of winning, so he wants to leave. Kevin Owens wants to stay and fight. And Sami Zayn's like, okay, whatever, fine. You go in, and Sami throws uh, Kevin Owens back in, and Braun, you know... <coughs> oh, excuse me there. No. Uh, Braun go ahead. Braun goes ahead and you know does a running power slam on Kevin Owens, and then Kevin Owens gets all mad, so he throws. No, no, wait. Bobby Lashley actually did the vertical suplex to Kevin Owens, and then Kevin Owens later on goes and throws um, Sami Zayn back in, and Sami Zayn gets the running uh, power slam. And Braun and uh, Lashley get the win, and then uh, let's see here. Um, Braun uh, beats them up after the match both a little bit. We didn't get the heel turn. There was a rumored heel turn that maybe Bobby Lashley was going to turn heel here and turn on uh, Braun Strowman. Um, Because otherwise it doesn't... They haven't really made any storyline reason for Braun and Lashley being together. Um, Maybe maybe we get that tomorrow night on Raw. uh, But we didn't get it here. And uh, I'm interested to see what's going to happen with... Kevin and Sammy now. I don't want to see them start fighting again. Uh, I mean, we already we just did that storyline for quite a quite some time on SmackDown, so I don't want to see it on Raw. I mean, they'll be on a new show, but you know, it's going to be the same story. So hopefully, they get over the fact that you know they can both decide to like, okay, you know what? Obviously, we're still friends, and you know, uh, we were both just scared of Braun, so we can get past it. Obviously. We, who would want to fight Braun? Because uh, I, I, I'm not interested in a storyline that I've just recently seen. Okay, after this, uh, we got our main event of the night, which was Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe. Um, you know, and before the match even started, Samoa Joe starts attacking Roman Reigns, being the heel he is. Um, slammed him through a table on the outside, threw him over uh, two other tables on the outside before the match even started. Uh, and then this was a match that had some really bad pacing problems. Like, I know Samoa Joe said that he was going to put Roman Reigns to sleep, so he's trying to, get in, trying to get him in submission holds, but there was a lot of submission holds that were like, okay, this is going on for way too long. Um, they're not doing anything. I want to see a little bit more action. I want to see Roman Reigns, like, you know, either Samoa Joe's got to be selling it more that he's wrenching him really hard and, like, Roman Reigns needs to be selling it more that he's like in pain but if you're just watching two guys lay there in the middle of the ring and it doesn't look like they're working then you know it gets a little bit boring like i mean look at rick flair whenever he was in whenever he was put himself in a submission hold like rick flair would be selling it the whole time like acting like he was in super bad pain like at least it was something you know some movement going on some some sound going on some entertainment not just laying there uh, but this was a match where, you know, fans were, um, they were chanting, this is boring during the match. They chant, they were chanting for Rusev Day. They were chanting delete. I mean, they were just chanting other stuff. They were like, okay, like we get it. Like we are bored of what's going on in the ring right now. Like give us something else. Um, and I don't blame him because again, there was a lot of points in this match that were too, way too slow. Um, we got the normal, uh, things like that. A couple of cool things actually happened in the match where offense from Samoa Joe, where, you know, uh, the second time I believe it was that Roman Reigns was going to do a drive by, uh, Samoa Joe actually catches him and then, uh, drags him into the ring and gets the, uh, gets the clutch on, uh, Roman Reigns and tries to put him to sleep. And then there was another time when Samoa Joe, uh, let, got the clutch on him and then, uh, was about to put him to sleep that, you know, those were the two times I were actually, oh, okay, it's starting to get good, but then right after that, it would slow right back down again. Uh, so pacing was a big problem to me here. 
but Roman Reigns in the in the end here, he ends up getting a spear on um, Samoa Joe, and uh, he got the win. And actually, when he got the win, you know, because fans were you know half cheering, half booing when he came out to the ring, but when Roman Reigns got the win here, like it was a loud pop, uh, like people i don't know maybe they were just excited to finally see this match end i don't know what it was uh uh, or they were just really excited to see roman reign wins but they the fans popped when he won so like the fans who were you know cheering for roman reigns really let everybody know that they were happy that roman reigns won and it wasn't just you know some of the crowd like it was a lot of the crowd it was a loud pop and then when they panned to the um arena real quick like you know, the, I saw a lot of fans like losing their, losing their minds, you know, like in, in the way of like having a good time. So, uh, you know, I, again, I think Roman Reigns is a really good worker. I'm a fan of Roman Reigns, his in-ring performances. I would not say this is one of the better ones. It was a little bit, you know, there was again, too many points in the match that were slow pace, but, um, but yeah, I mean, the fans enjoyed the finish at least. Uh, but yeah, that was all of, the backlash 2018 main show so then let's get to the post show i thought there were some great segments on the post show uh here hosted by renee young and pete rosenberg um we had elias come on in the beginning and you know like uh so he finally gets to do the performance that he wanted to do uh in the ring that kept getting interrupted um you know he's talking about how all the other uh WWE superstars are jealous of his talent because he's so talented that he can play all these different instruments and sing and whatnot. Uh, but then he does his performance. It was actually a good one. Um, some some good uh, good stuff in there. You know, this nor- normal heelish stuff he does, like talking bad about the city. Uh, the next uh, segment we got was a great one with uh, Carmella coming in and she just is repeating over and over that like i beat charlotte guess what guys i beat charlotte hey do you know who beat charlotte i beat charlotte hey let me give you a multiple choice test who uh who beat charlotte oh me yeah it was me i beat charlotte did how many times i beat her one or two times oh i beat her twice um i thought it was great and then uh you know when she actually starts to go off screen um she goes off screen for a little bit and then uh, Renee Young and Pete Rosenberg are talking to each other and then you just all of a sudden see uh, Carmella out of nowhere coming across the screen. She's just doing her moonwalk and she's like dancing and shaking her booty like holding the uh, WWE title like in the in the screen like and then she at one point she like goes like I beat Charlotte like it was it was good. That was a good segment really funny again. Um after that, we had uh, The Miz come on last for the post show, um, you know, and he's just talking about, like, how any title that he holds, he makes relevant, uh, which is why the inter- kind of Intercontinental title was the most relevant um, title, because he was the one who held it. Um, and then he says he's going to make the WWE SmackDown title the most relevant again, because he's going to go to Money in the Bank and uh win money in the bank and then eventually cash in and be the wwe champion again uh he announces to us he lets us know the way he is going to do this um renee asks him like well how do you even know you're going to be in the money in the bank match and he says well i have a match on tuesday on smackdown that i'm going to win it's a qualifying match to get into money in the bank i'm going to win it and then i'm going to win money in the bank and then i'm going to be the wwe champion Uh, I don't think it's that easy. We haven't found out who his opponent is for Tuesday yet. He didn't tell us that part, so maybe it's not going to be such an easy win uh, to guarantee him that spot in Money in the Bank. Um, I think it would be funny if he lost on Tuesday uh, to not get in Money in the Bank, and then maybe he still finds a way on, but then he has to do something else to find his way on the show. Uh, But the fact that he was so confident here, it would be funny if he lost on Tuesday. Uh, But he, he had some good stuff going in here. Uh, for him as well some other you know stuff he was talking about he talked about tummy time uh, if you guys watch the post show that is a real thing that i have done with both of my kids you know he's right you got to strengthen your baby's necks you know when they're about a month old you got to start rolling them over on that belly so they can start lifting their head up and getting some strength in their neck uh you know so he's proven how he's being a good dad and you know he's got all these million things he's doing in his schedule but he's still you know a top guy and uh He's a workhorse guy, and he's going to be a champion again, Uh, which, you know, he's one of the guys, I would say, when we first started this show, 
just a little bit into it, I was saying, you know, I was saying, um, obviously Roman Reigns, obviously most, obviously Braun Strowman, The Miz, and Elias. Those are the four guys I think are like the top guys in the company right now that I'd like to see titles on, uh, just based on like their in-ring performance and, you know, promos. Uh, those are guys that I'm loving uh, from that time and now uh, recently especially with the heel change Shinsuke Nakamura is in that list like those five guys especially like our guys that I want to see at the top of the show every show like you know um, oh and I can't forget Seth Rollins right now Seth Rollins so six guys that you know there's six legitimate guys that I would like to see in you know the headline of any show any pay-per-view uh, period those guys are all well worth, you know, being the main event for shows. And then on the women's side, obviously, Charlotte, Asuka, and Ronda Rousey right now, for sure. Uh, those three are all women. Like, you know, if you give them main events for any show, uh, you know, I'll be excited for those matches as main events. Um, but yeah, the, that was Backlash 2018, guys. This is an instant take here. So I'll be back later on at some point this week uh, with uh, my co-host and wife, Andrea, to uh, kind of give you a full rundown of the show, a little bit more depth and detail, and let you guys know what we think. But for now, thank you for checking it out, and uh, we'll check you later. Bye.